Good evening, I'm Will Bott. And I'm Callie LeCount. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. Would you know what to do? It's important for us to train these types of scenarios. UWM police can help, but only if you show up. We'll explain. What does the bronze fonds have to do with this guy? If you draw a picture, you go and show off to people, like, look, I, I draw somebody, I draw my, my dog, so. We'll introduce you to an artist who uses hallway floors as his canvas. Come on, White! Panthers, Badgers, and Phoenix. It's rivalry week. We'll show you who came out on top. All that and more next on UWM Panther Vision. From the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. A UWM alum says that if you're not prepared, it's almost a form of malpractice. Yet, not a single student showed up for active shooter training at UWM this week. I saw an individual run past, um, and he had a gun. John Monroe was working at the Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. when a shooter stalked the hallways last month. He survived by hiding in an office. All you could hear was gunshots and people screaming. Once we got out, I mean, I, I pretty much ran as fast as I could. Twelve people were gunned down. Monroe is urging everyone to learn what they can do in an active shooter situation. These days, almost, um, that something like that could happen. Uh, you look back at, you know, Virginia Tech, and that, that's a campus situation. They were going to school like everybody else was. Who would have thought that something would happen like that? It is a rare event, but so are hurricanes and so are tornadoes. Um, we saw earthquakes, but you, we still train for them. We train from them as kids, we, you know, hide them in your desks. Um, but for active shooter, we don't. I think it's, it's necessary these days. Um, and if people don't do it, uh, it's, to me, it's almost a form of malpractice. You, you, you have to do that. UWM does offer classes on what to do in an active shooter situation. In fact, they just offered one last week, but not a single student showed up. Officer Donald Brown conducts the classes, and had anyone shown up, he would have given them these tips. Leave the building, go to a safe location, call the police department, give us a description of the suspect, uh, where he may be located, what kind of weapon he's got. The hideout, if you're in a, if you can't get out of the building, are you locking yourself in a room? barricading yourself in a room, what you need to do as far as barricading the doors. Uh, the takeout. The takeout, we're talking about you being aggressive and you're going to have to use some kind of physical force to stop that person's actions. The next training session is scheduled for November 21st. The death of a 22-year-old UWM student leaves his classmates searching for the reason why. And as I found out, Ian Elliott is being remembered for his sense of humor and charisma. UWM's Guest House on Thursday nights, teams of students get together to play trivia. Wow. Today's theme is trick or treat. Wow. But trivia is not the only thing on this team's mind. They are also mourning the loss of a dear friend. He's a total goofball and like a little bit of a troublemaker. Last Sunday, UWM Panther Ian Elliott passed away. It's crazy to think, you know, how you can meet people every day and see the same people you know, 24-7 and then just gone, it's, it's crazy. A video game enthusiast, a leader in student government, and a self-proclaimed darts master, Elliot wore many hats. Jerome Scott met Elliot when they joined the intramural dodgeball team together. He was probably one of the more animated people on the team. If you wanted to be his friend, you could do it like in two days. Maggie Eichen's friendship with Elliot was filled with laughter. They had some construction outside of Sendex and they had traffic cones around. Suddenly all of those traffic cones, like not just one traffic cone that you can like pick up, but like four traffic cones had been moved into the streets. It still makes me laugh. It was hilarious. Elliot was known for his charisma. He and Bailey Kittle became friends in Arabic class. They were both part of the military. It was important to him. He served in a combat position when he was in the Navy, so sometimes I would ask him questions. Kittle enjoyed Elliot's company. His idea of 
a relaxing evening at home was sitting on his front porch listening to jazz in a suit, smoking a cigar and drinking whiskey, so. No one has the answers for why Elliot is gone. I just been trying to be supportive of anyone that I can and do what Ian would do, you know? I'm sure that if any of us were in a similar situation that he'd do it for us. In the wake of his death, UWM is left with fond memories and life lessons. Don't quit, stay classy, because that was sort of his philosophy. A memorial fund has been set up in honor of Elliot. Police are still looking for two suspects in connection with two separate armed robberies on the Marquette campus. A campus spokesperson says three men robbed three female students at gunpoint. Minutes later, the men allegedly tried to rob a male student. Police apprehended one of the suspects, but the other two fled the scene in a vehicle. The suspects stole about $2,000 worth of property. There's been an armed robbery at the UWM residence hall, but that might be news to most UWM students. Panther Vision's Mike Picaro has the report. Cambridge Commons is a place called home by 700 UWM students. You live here, so you think you're kind of safe wherever you are. But on one fall Saturday afternoon, Cambridge had an unwelcome guest stop by for a visit. I heard that there was a robbery a couple weekends ago, and the one person was held at gunpoint, and then it was closed down for uh, two or three days because the police were investigating. The ReStore, which is located at the intersection of Cambridge and North Avenue, was robbed at gunpoint at around 2 in the afternoon on Saturday, October 5th. According to one of the ReStore workers, the man was not a UWM student and was using a fake gun. The man took around $140 before being caught by Milwaukee police just a block away by pick and save on East Garfield Avenue. UWM sophomore and Cambridge resident Jordan Ford had no idea the store was robbed. I heard nothing about a robbery at the ReStore at all. It's a little weird that, you know, somewhere where I live got robbed and I know nothing about it. The university didn't notify students about the robbery, which left students to question why the store was closed unexpectedly. I get the whole they don't want everybody to freak out thing, but I'd rather know than not know. Freshman Chris Grolke assumed everyone found out about what happened. I get told by the university, but I thought people just kind of got told by their RA or just other people. The week of October 14th was safety week on UWM's campus, but that too came to the surprise of students. We all haven't seen signs or anything. Grolke doesn't need help practicing safety, but he wouldn't mind knowing about it. Well, it's kind of Milwaukee, so you should, I try to always be safe, but if it's safety week, they should, you know, make an extra effort to make sure that people actually know about it. Freshman John and Muhammad agrees. Well, not necessarily just because I've lived here all my life, so, I mean, I guess I'm kind of used to more. In Milwaukee, I mean, I'm Mike Percaro for Panther Vision. Nice to kind of know, because you live here, so you and Cambridge Commons is one of three off-campus residence halls at UWM. Crimes committed at those halls are not included in on-campus crime statistics. You might be able to save some money on your student loans soon. Some Democratic lawmakers may introduce a bill in Congress allowing students to refinance their loans at a lower interest rate. The average savings could be about $500 a year. The lawmakers say they hope to introduce the bill next month. It's National LGBT History Month, and an event in Michigan is having an impact at UWM. A former Milwaukee area high school basketball star became the first NCAA player to come out publicly. Tony Atkins has the story. Just a few weeks ago, former Milwaukee area preps basketball star Derek Schill became the first openly gay basketball player in the NCAA. This historic moment happened in October, National LGBT History Month. While this news created massive ripples in the national media, this is nothing new to UWM. Amanda Braun is UW-Milwaukee's new athletic director. She commended Shell for taking the opportunity to come out publicly. He takes courage, regardless of what the reason, and uh, he'll, he'll deal with potentially some people that have things to say, and he, you know, um, he should be somebody that we look at as, I think, a model. Yeah. Braun has been a model herself, she too is out publicly as a lesbian and believes that people should do what makes them happy. Um, there's so much in life to do and we get to do this once. We get to live our lives once, so we, get to, we need to do it the way we want to do it. 
UWM's LGBT Resource Center looks to help people embrace who they are. Cameron Brither is the assistant director of a center that plays home to many. We really try to run our office as a family space, so we have a lounge area just to the side of my desk that we call the family room. Brither is proud of the success of the center and the rest of the Milwaukee community. It's just that kind of environment, especially the environment that we see here in the Resource Center, that's really helped to make the LGBT plus community in Greater Milwaukee a really wonderful place to come out into. Rick Banks, the president of UWM's Black Student Union, found a home in the LGBT community. It's important for everybody to, to go on their own journey and not rush it. And so come out when you feel like you're ready to come out. Brother enjoys Shell's story and thinks that it will be a good thing to happen at UWM. Um, that's a wonderful story, and I would love to be able to see something like that here happen at EWM with our out athletes. In Milwaukee, I'm Tony Atkins, UWM Panther Vision. The LGBT Center is located in the Student Union. What's UWM have to do with your Friday fish fry? We'll tell you in a moment. And if you're into heavy metal, MATC might be the place for you. But we're not talking music. That and more when we come back. What I need from each and every one of you is a full target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, and dog house in that area. Your fugitive has just cashed in his 401k plan, and all he had to do was roll it over. Learn about rollovers and protecting your financial future, and choose to save. You can't mess with the big dog. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. Restaurants could get some relief in their Friday fish fry supply thanks to UWM. A shortage of lake perch has caused many restaurants to remove the popular fish from their menus. But a system set up by UWM will look to improve the production of farmed perch and get it back on restaurant menus. The system is at Growing Power, a community-based urban agricultural organization. The organization will help train future fish farmers. And more perch means cheaper Friday fish fries for consumers. Campuses throughout Wisconsin are trying to figure out their policies on e-cigarettes. An alternative to traditional cigarettes, e-cigarettes emit vapor instead of smoke, and campuses aren't sure whether to ban them. UW Stout banned tobacco on its campus in 2010, but still allows e-cigarettes. UW River Falls banned tobacco and e-cigarettes this July. UWM bans tobacco in all buildings and parking structures, but allows it outdoors. Smokers must be at least 25 feet away from all buildings. With parties, events, and all-night study sessions taking up evening hours, many college students turn to coffee to feel awake for morning classes. But as MATC's Daniel Mitch reports, skipping sleep is a bad idea. Nearly all students here at MATC have dealt with a lack of sleep. Many complain that it causes them to lose their focus or be tired throughout the day, although there may be a more serious problem. When they say um, the lack of sleep and sleep deprivation kills, it really is true. Suzanne Goodrich, the co-chair of the psychology department and an instructor at MATC, says that lack of sleep is a major problem among students that is sometimes ignored. It should be equated with 
um, as much information as we provide on diet and exercise. Many MATC students, like students across the country, are simply not getting enough sleep. On a weekday is school, study, sleep, that's it. Between four and five hours. You really need to get seven to eight hours of sleep. Not getting enough sleep causes many problems for students. Makes it hard to stay awake in class, can't pay attention, can't focus on the material, makes it hard for work and everything else because almost everybody's got to work right now. Poor concentration. We are not able to really um, remember things as effectively as we were before. Um, our reasoning suffers. We have poor problem solving. We're not able to think as creatively. Many students try to cheat their sleep schedules. I love naps. I take them probably twice a week, and all I do is sleep on the weekends. But there is no replacement for a solid, consistent sleep schedule. You're trying to force your body to get that time back, and you really can't. If you're a student and you're really trying to make the most out of your experiences, you can't do that unless you get at least seven hours, seven to eight hours of sleep a night. This is Dan Mish reporting for MATC. Back to you. Experts recommend adults get at least seven hours of sleep a night but some people may require up to 10 hours to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Samantha Nash joins us with a look at our weather. Hi guys, how are you today? Good, Great, how are you thanks. doing? Did you guys get a chance to get out and enjoy that beautiful weather over the weekend? Oh yeah, that was awesome. That's good because it's actually, it's gonna drop a lot. It's getting yeah. colder. Um, we're gonna see uh, temperatures down today, but uh, rising later in the week, um, up to a nice warm Halloween for Thursday, and then uh, we're going to have cooler temperatures this weekend um, to round out our transition into November. Uh, right now we've got overcast skies over Milwaukee um, with a temperature of about 43 degrees and pretty, pretty uh, strong winds coming out of the northwest. Uh, dew point 36 degrees. Um, and then today uh, we've got some uh, lower temperatures up in... We've got uh, highs of about 39 in Rhinelander, um, 46 in La Crosse, and then 48 down here in Milwaukee, which is pretty nice for us. Um, tonight we're going to see it, uh, some increasing cloud cover um, throughout the day, but then uh, we're going to stay consistent. That's what I'm doing. Okay, and then um, we're going to have lows of 33 degrees, and then tomorrow we're going to have a little bit warmer temperatures. Um, up to about 59 degrees and then um, a low of 55. Um, winds out of the southeast with about 10 miles per hour. We're going to see a little bit more showers on Wednesday, um, but then Thursday uh, we're going to have um, a lot better highs of about 61 for our Halloween. Um, so I hope you guys made your Halloween costume so that you can put a uh, raincoat over it. Oh, yeah. What are you going as? Well, this year I might be going as a, as a swimmer model um, but I, but I still have okay. to decide well the the wetness will will go with it so <laughs> have a good week guys <laughs> thanks Sam a heavy metal tour is usually something that gets rock and roll fans to flock arenas however the heavy metal tour at MATC is designed to get high school seniors interested in the manufacturing industry Miranda Morin tells us more in the MATC report MATC's Center for Energy Conservation and Advanced Manufacturing invites high school students to visit for the heavy metal tour. The tour emphasizes the need for skilled workers in the manufacturing industry. The students start off by listening to a presentation. People going into college do not find their way to get a degree in four years. About 53% of college graduates are either unemployed or underemployed. Being aware of that skills gap, manufacturing companies such as Crohn's give their time to talk about job opportunities. That's what we're here to do. We want to make sure that students are seeing that there's manufacturing companies um, that have a good work environment, good company culture, um, we have really great benefits, and we also um, have flexible work schedules. So we think that that's really important for us to promote in the community so that these kids can see that going into a company that has a good company culture, they can build a career. A manufacturing job can be fulfilling. Keith Moen states why. Every business has a sign in front of it. You'll actually get to see what you manufacture, what you produce every day. That's a good feeling to see. Students then met with instructors and watched a few demos. The Center for Energy Conservation and Advanced Manufacturing was designed to answer the increasing challenges facing manufacturers in southeastern Wisconsin. By donating their time, MATC staff and companies hope to encourage more students to pursue a career in the industry. This has been Miranda Morn with MATC Report. 
According to the staffing agency Manpower, skilled trades such as manufacturing have been the hardest positions to fill for the last three years. UW-Madison students might be doing the jump around for graduation next spring. That's because the university is going back to a tradition starting in 1925 and holding graduation ceremonies at Camp Randall. In recent years, Madison held four separate commencement ceremonies at the Cole Center. The move back to Camp Randall means there will be one ceremony for the entire graduating class. Coming up, the Panthers play some big rivals. And we'll show you some spinning and twisting, but not on the hallway floor, not, but on the hallway floor, not the dance floor. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal Student Aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, judged best student newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. Both UWM soccer teams had a busy week last week. And the volleyball team keeps it rolling in conference. Kevin Grinke tells us more in sports. Kevin? It's down to the wire for the men's and women's soccer teams. Both teams are fighting for the top seed in the conference tournament. It was a chilly doubleheader against in-state rivals last Wednesday. For the women, it was a milestone. And for the men, it was a battle. Panther Vision's Mike Percaro has the story. the UWM women's soccer team from achieving a milestone Wednesday night at Engelman Stadium. We're just humbled to be a part of it. The Panthers defeated in-state foe Green Bay 2-0 to capture win number 300 in program history. Um, we're carrying the torch right now and we hope we get to keep carrying it but there's been some fantastic names uh, and people that I'm very proud to be associated with from uh, all the players that have been in this program to previous coaches the whole Moynihan family has had a huge part of this program. Um, they've been a huge part of, of getting to 300. Come on, White! The game was scoreless after one half of play, but Milwaukee came out firing in the second half, getting two goals from junior Kelly Lures. Yeah, Kelly's just been fantastic this season. The win moves the Panthers back into first place in the Horizon League with two games to play. Coach Henschel just hopes the team can finish strong and stay healthy. I think the amount of possession we're, we're creating for ourselves sometimes leads to some extra hits. And, uh, you know, we're taking some injuries, and hopefully the referees will keep protecting us and, and uh, letting us play the attractive game that we try to play. Following the women's game, the UWM men's soccer team took on in-state rival Wisconsin. Goals were hard to come by for much of the match. Junior Lori Bell converted a penalty kick to give the Panthers a 1-0 lead in the 83rd minute. The Badgers quickly struck back with a goal of their own just 22 seconds later to tie the game at 1. The match finished in a 1-1 draw. In Milwaukee, I'm Mike Percaro for Panther Vision. With a win this coming Saturday, women will clinch the regular season conference title. The men need to win out and get some help from other teams. It was a senior day for the women as they played conference foe Youngstown State Saturday. They fought for a 3-2 comeback victory. 
Morgan LaPlante had the game-tying goal in the 79th minute. Kelsey Holbert scored the game-winning goal just eight minutes later. The men followed in the women's footsteps by beating the Oakland Golden Grizzlies 2-1. to one. It was the first time these teams played as a conference opponent. James Ashcroft opened the scoring for the Panthers in the 28th minute, and Lori Bell netted his league-leading 10th goal of the season to give the Panthers the victory. The UWM women's volleyball team is still perfect in the Horizon League. The team traveled to Wright State and Oakland over the weekend to play a pair of league matches. Nicole Latzig led the team with 12 kills on Friday against Wright State as the Panthers swept the Raiders. On Saturday, reigning Offensive Player of the Week, Rachel Newberger, had 11 kills and the Panthers won in straight sets against the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. The team improves to 13-8 overall and 9-0 in league play. In the pool, two UWM athletes are winning awards. Emily McClellan and KJ Heger were named Horizon League Swimmer and Diver of the Week last week. It is the sixth time in their collegiate careers that the two have won these awards. McClellan rebroke her own pool record in the 100-meter breaststroke, and Heger broke his own school record in 3-meter diving. That's it for sports. Back to you, Will and Callie. Thank you, Kevin. There is an endless number of dance organizations on our campus. But none quite as athletic as this group. Panther Vision reporter Michael Friday breaks down what UWM's B-Boys are all about. Town that lays claim to the Fonz. Yes, that one. Sorting through all the dance club options at UWM is like selecting the right song from an old jukebox. There's the metronomic patterns of Latin dance. The in-your-face swagger of hype dance. The organic tranquility of Tai Chi, which is sort of like a dance. Preferences aside, I defy you to find a style that combines a higher level of rhythm, panache, and sheer athleticism than that of breakdancing. Meet Alexei Andreevich Antipov, Yosha for short, the mad Russian responsible for the renaissance of the b-boy club here at UWM. So I'm just trying to build the bigger community and, and have, have a, a reason to dance for and practice for. Spend a few minutes with Yosha and you quickly realize he's the type of renegade the Eagles would write a song about. He's definitely on character. Uh, he's definitely on, you know, different than most, most of the people that I met here. A certain kind of fool, and I mean that in the best way. Who doesn't care if some call him crazy? My parents want me to focus on school more. So how was he inspired to break dance? Did he see it in a window like an outlaw sees a gun? When I started, I was always looking at like international b-boys, like Korean b-boys, German b-boys. You just, um, they're all over YouTube. All those crazy, crazy YouTube videos you see, that was, that was my uh, basic motivation. That's, that's what I was going for. Despite his Russian background, it's clear that Yosha isn't a modern day Barishnikov. But nonetheless, to paraphrase Glenn Fry. Yosha is the man who won. When you make something new, it's just like if you, um, if you draw a picture, you go and show off to people, like, look, I, I draw somebody, I draw my, my dog. So, so the most fun of it is just you make your moves, and when you go battle, you, do, you basically like show off your moves, and it's like, oh, can you do better than me? So that's, I guess, the, the most satisfaction I get out of it. In other words, for Yosha and his crew, any day spent breakdancing is a happy one. In Milwaukee, I'm Michael Friday for Panther Vision. Thank you for tuning in for tonight's edition of UWM Panther Vision. You can watch us on Time Warner Channel 14 and AT&T Uverse Channel 99 at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. Have a great week. <laughs>